Ahoy, and welcome back to Domance Dawn. I am Luke, he, they, and Janine was unable to make it this week, and I didn't want to do another episode without her, even though the next arc is incredibly inconsequential, but uh, instead we have a special guest this week whose work you have seen gracing the covers of uh, the Domance Dawn podcast this week. Uh, that would be our artist, Colt. Hey there, how's it going? Yes. I'm Colt. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, ahoy! Welcome do, aboard. Do I have to say ahoy? Is that required? Ahoy hoy! No. Uh, is, is, is that appropriate for the show? Ahoy hoy? Do a little bit of Mr. Burns there? Oh no! I, I think that's like a very appropriate mix of like yeah, pirate like shows and, and yeah, absolutely some awesome stuff. Yeah. yeah, how's it going, Luke? Yeah, uh, good. I got back from vacation, and now I can better describe wine than I could before. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. so that means you weren't drinking enough of it, is my personal opinion. Uh, I, I don't. I don't know if we endorse. You know, drinking on this show—it's a pirate show, so I feel like we should. Uh, uh, I mean, we're not covering the four kids version where they had to edit out all the alcohol and drinking. All right, fantastic. Yeah, they're having all that uh, that grape juice in the show back then. Milk. Oh, uh, okay. Or yeah. eventually soda pop, but soda pop also appears on the actual show. One Piece is a weird show. Yeah, yeah. I never got into One Piece, which. Uh, you know, it, 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 it's a challenge doing some of those posters sometimes because I'm like, oh, yeah, I'll totally draw Finn Ripper or, you know, Shingle Legs or, you know, whatever yeah. the character of the week is. Yeah, yeah, because uh, uh, I wanted to get you on because uh, essentially the way that the cover process works is Janine and I finish recording the episode, so we have our list of like characters to match up. And then I send you a bunch of screen caps. And like initially I sent you one and I decided to just let you pick, and then I give you a list of like who the characters are. And uh you you go at it and like uh, typically if I'm sending you multiple options, how do you kind of choose what you go with? Uh, usually I kind of look at the ones that I've done in the past and try to choose something that's going to be visually different because I like the idea of if you put all of them in a row, none of them are kind of the same, uh, perspective or, uh, composition. And also a lot of it is looking at what makes a good standalone image. Yeah, you know, there's some stuff where, uh, you know, it, it might be, you know, it, it might be kind of an interesting drawing to do, you know, uh, Luffy's fist bursting through the roof of, you know, this temple or something like that. Mm -hmm. But it, it doesn't really tell a story necessarily, at least in my mind. Um, it's something that I want to, you know, stand alone as an image and be, you know, visually interesting, just as this weird little mashup of, you know, One Piece and The Simpsons. Yeah, I, I think that's going to become a lot more fascinating as we go on, because so far, most of the arcs have been uh, something we could cover in one episode or two episodes, and... I know eventually we're going to be getting to bigger ones where it's like I we've got a uh, alabaster uh, coming up in I think we'll probably hit it in December, but like that's where it's going to take I think six episodes of the show to get through everything, mm -hmm. and like there's also going to be some points where it's like oh there's a lot more filler here so I'm going to look. <laughs> most interesting pictures that i can but uh like i'm specifically trying to get scenes that are big 
or kind of dramatic. Yeah. Yeah. You always send me cool stuff. It's always, you know, I, it's usually one of those things where I look at it. And I'm like, well, I don't want to draw that, that, or that, but these four are really cool. And now mm-hmm. I have to decide which one is going to make the, uh, a lot of it too is looking at what is going to translate into a cool image with a Simpsons character. Cause Simpsons characters like can look really weird if they're being viewed from a certain angle mm-hmm. or, or just like, I try to keep everything really on model as much as I can for someone who doesn't really draw in that style. Um, but I want it to look like if the Simpsons did an episode where they were parodying one piece, it would look like it just kind of came out of the cartoon. And, you know, a, a big thing of the Simpsons is that like they avoid drawing characters from certain angles or drawing, you know, certain, uh, you know, certain, I, I, I don't know, camera angles even. So mm-hmm. it, it's one of those things where I have to look and go, like, all right, like I can't draw Homer or, you know, Bart or Lisa or whoever from, you know, and make it look like this screenshot. So I'll just go ahead and discard that one out of hand, even if it would be a cool image. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's definitely one of those things where as a, where as Simpsons has gone on, they've definitely become more restrictive on like what angles they use and how they draw. Cause like comparing the Tracy Ullman shorts, like season one to even like season two, things start to get a lot more firm. Yeah. Well, I, it, it's one of those things where just like that, you know, not to be an old man about it, but that hand drawn animation has enough flaws in it where it kind of comes to life in a way that something that is largely being automated and kind of like i don't know the simpsons animation process but it was pretty like clear after the movie um that it shifted in a big way um Mm -hmm. and it looks way more computer driven um in a way that i don't find super appealing um it, it reminds me of something like family guy um where it's like okay we're going to stick with this one very constrained uh angle and it's all kind of filmed like a sitcom or something whereas you know the first few seasons they do interesting things they put the camera in interesting places and you know i i feel like this show is kind of missing that uh in the last few seasons that i've watched which i don't keep up with the simpsons anymore um but you know i'll dip in and watch it on hulu every now and then so like what was your experience growing up with the Simpsons because it sounds like you had little to no relationship with One Piece Mm. Uh, yeah Simpsons was my jam whenever I was a kid Um, you know it was one of those things where it came on every night at I want to say 6 p.m. on like you know Fox 7 or whatever I didn't have cable as a kid so you know I I basically in the afternoon they had like the Fox Kids uh, programming block of like Batman, the animated series. And I, I don't even know what else was on in that little, you know, time frame there. You got some power Rangers. Some, yeah. 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 Maybe some beetle Borgs may have been in there. Um, yep. yeah, I, I think Pokemon may have eventually kind of shifted over there. Um, I can't remember. No, but yeah. Pokemon was uh, WB. Really? Cause I remember, I thought it was on Fox kids. I have a Fox kids magazine with Pokemon in it. <laughs> No, I think that was just because Pokemon was kind of like the kid thing for a while. Mm. I, I'd challenge that, but I, I'm not certain enough to do so. But it's one of those things because a lot of those Fox Kids shows moved over to WB whenever they kind there, of got their stuff together. There were uh, transitions like that. Like that happened to uh, Batman the Animated Series when it yeah. became Batman the New Adventure or the New Adventures of Batman and Robin. Yeah, and I can't wait to have to like make a bunch of um actuallys when I fact check myself. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, I know Pokemon at least for the first while was on WB. It did eventually move over to Disney XD, and then most recently it has been uh, Netflix original, so to speak. Huh. I, I had no idea it was just a Netflix thing now. That's interesting. Yeah. Uh well there's also like the Pokemon channel where you can just watch Pokemon, but uh <laughs> deep down on like the weird mosaic that makes up my mind, there's just like 
the audio clip of starting right now see Lou Bega live on the kids WB snow jam with brand new shows all morning including three new Pokemon that Lou Bega sings isn't it weird how you can like every now and then you'll just hear a little snippet of something that instantly brings you back to being like 11 years old and you're like oh I remember that mm-hmm yeah, but no, so Simpsons for me was one of those things where I looked forward to it all day, and then, you know, I got it for like half an hour, and I think it was like, I think MASH came on beforehand, so I'd sit there and watch like the last 15 minutes of MASH, like before Simpsons uh, came on. So it's like, oh, I get a little bit of the Vietnam War, and then Simpsons. Um, and, and, you know, I, I could definitely quote, you know, endless amounts of The Simpsons and, you know, recite uh you know, plops from memory and all that stuff whenever I was a kid. And now enough time has passed where it's all new to me whenever I watch it. Like I, uh, last Halloween, I watched all of the Treehouse of Horror episodes starting at the beginning. Same. Well, it, isn't it weird that there's a very clear line of like demarcation and quality kind of, it's like right around like season 13, it's like, oh, this is whenever the show got bad. And you can tell because even the Treehouse of Horror episode isn't good. And that's the one where they always kind of bring it. Yeah, like, there's one that I always... There's the uh, Day of the Dolphin segment that I always forget is later than it actually is because it's a really good segment. But mm-hmm. it's also attached to, like, the uh, Hansel and Gretel fairy tale segment. Mm-hmm. And it's like, ooh, no, I, I thought that was earlier mm-hmm. because uh, there's... Because, like, the dolphin segment is so good, and the fairy tale feels very much like later on when they just start doing anthology episodes because they yeah. have ideas. Which, yeah, it, it's never like, oh, we're actually, like, you know, parodying, you know, a certain horror movie or franchise or even just an original story that has, like, a creepy bent. It's just like, what can we make, what, what can we do to kind of put these characters in a different, slightly creepy context? Well, and they, cool. well and they aren't even creepy or scary anymore a lot of the times it's just like oh here's a premise it's uh what if the old people turned into dinosaurs and it's Jurassic Park it's like no I guess sure why not yeah it's I don't know I I still I I check out the Trias of Horror episode every year because again it's going to be the one time a year that if they're going to make a really great episode it's going to be for that Mm-hmm. Um, and usually I leave a little bit disappointed, um, but I, I just love like holiday specials anyway. So I'll watch it even if it's garbage. Oh yeah, I I I am with you there. There's something magical about the holiday special, which I say as a person who has been like, should I bring Multiversal Q back for a holiday special this year? <laughs> I like, support holiday specials in all their forms. Like anytime there's a comic book that's set at Christmas, it's like the Shane Black in me awakens. I'm like, oh yeah, absolutely. Let's do this. I mean, the other real reason I love those Halloween episodes and the anthology episodes in the context of Delmad's Dawn is uh, Simpsons claims to have a cast of thousands and doesn't really have that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Like, there's people, but it's not like they're actual characters. Yeah, well, and even then, like, there's a lot of recurring background characters who are just never named or never given anything of value. And it's like, uh, well, neither of the Simpsons wikis uses these, but if you, I showed you a picture of them, you'd know them. Meanwhile, One Piece is like, oh, yeah, we're giving names to these characters. Uh, we're filling out info cards with their birthdays on them and their blood type. Uh, yeah. Like I knew that One Piece was kind of on to some a whole next level thing. Whenever you told me the name of the bug that's in Sanji soup in one, oh yeah, Sanji. Had, yeah, and I was like, why? And, and then I, I like I went and I got on the uh, like the you know Animepedia or whatever, and I was like, oh, surely this bug, you know, it's like a guy who turns into a bug or a bug who turns into a guy, or, and like he has a whole backstory because he has a name. No, he's just in one scene. That's it. Oh yeah, and he changes between the manga and the in the anime and the manga. Uh yeah, his birthday is going to be July first. Yeah, that's ridiculous. I don't know why. Is it is it Oda? Is that the the, uh, the uh, manga or Oda? Yes. Okay, yeah. I don't know how much time he has in a day where he's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna name the bug and give him a birthday. Uh, he does a lot of uh, like 
fan letters, and so sometimes people be like, "Hey, uh, this guy was interesting. What's his name?" It, it would just like throw something off. Or there is eventually a point where people start suggesting birthdays for characters who don't have them. I feel and, like that's a good way to very quickly, like, just find yourself in some uh, some fan bullshit where it's like. You know, whenever J.K. Rowling, before she went full turf, was like, yeah, like, wizards just, like, kind of shit wherever. And, uh, oh, no, that know. was when she was full turf. But Oh, uh, had she already gone that point? Wow, that, yeah. that doesn't surprise me. No, that, but, yeah. was like, that was Pottermore bullshit. Yeah. But, yeah, um, you get to that point where you're just, like, kind of, like, riffing and, like, oh, yeah, I, I guess it's, uh, yeah, his name's this. And, yeah, he's, he, his favorite food is pretzels. And then you bring him back later, he's not eating a pretzel. And someone's like, why isn't he eating a pretzel? I was like, well, I, I forgot. That's why. Oh, no, they do have, like, favorite foods for a lot of the characters. And, oh, good lord. Oh, like, the main cast and a bunch of special characters who haven't been introduced. It's like, uh, this is what nationality they would be from if they came from our world. And that was actually something that Netflix honored with, like, they're casting for their weird live action version that they're doing. Oh no, I forgot about that. Has, yeah. there, ever, has there ever been a good, you know, anime to live action? Well, you know what? Actually, I take a that good back. American. There's the yes. There's the stipulation because I was gonna say like I'll watch like you know the live action My Love Story or something like that where it's like oh hey like this you know cute. You know, shoujo manga was made into a uh, weird live action show. Like, I'll, I'll check that out. I mean, people liked uh, Live, Die, Repeat, which was based off a of manhwa. Yeah, but only very, like, liberally based off of it, right? Like, it's, you know, it's like Tom Cruise and Emily Blunt are there, and, you know, there's a time travel component, but uh, I got the feeling that it was more like, yeah, we, we got the name. And, you know, kind of, you know what? Black Swan. Black Swan's a good anime adaptation. Is it? Uh, have you ever seen a Perfect Blue? Yeah, but that's that's just, uh, what's his face? Aronofsky being a secret weeaboo, and then... But yeah, like, this, this is just me taking a shot at Aronofsky for there. plagiarizing. Oh, no, I mean, him and Nolan... Satoshi Khan. Yeah, both uh, him and Nolan steal from Satoshi Khan frequently and yet are far less radical in their views or what they are attempting to do and it's just like but we we made this visual that was animated in the real world and yeah i you know as long as i'm you know just you know shading hollywood directors who will never hear this uh christopher nolan makes bad movies and i'm tired of people pretending that he makes good movies oh i think the biggest thing with Christopher Nolan movies is that he has issues getting ideas across, which is why so many people leave the movies confused. They think that because they don't understand it, there's something greater to understand. And it's like, no, you're just, he took all the photos and it's very easy to follow what Memento is about. It's yeah. done very well, but it's not like there's no secret message in it. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, oh, like I didn't quite get it, so there must be a lot more. For me, it's just, I think they're boring, like, soulless movies a lot of the time. Like, you know, I like Batman Begins just fine. It's not a great movie, but it's a fine Batman movie. And then, but, like, you watch those now, and it's just like, oh, these were, like, comic book movies before we kind of knew what those should look like or could look like. Like, I watched the Robert Pattinson Batman movie, and I was like, oh, this is actually, like, super fun. And she, like, has character and heart. And Nolan, Nolan was comic book movies for an audience that was trying to say, no, uh, you see, The Watchmen is on this Times 100 graphic novel, so if we do stuff like The Watchmen, that's how we get to be, like, adult. And then Marvel's like, ah, uh, no, we're just going to go big blockbuster energy. I, I loved the Pattinson Batman. Yeah, I had no expectations, which probably helped. Um, but yeah, I, I sat down, like whenever um, you know it starts playing the emo music while he's riding his motorcycle through the city. I was like, okay, awesome, great. Mm -hmm. I feel like we lost. But you know what? No, this all connects back to One Piece because One Piece 
is, oh, yeah. very, is very uncomplicated because it's all about friendship and, you know, doing good in the world and no. also stretching <laughs> your body. No? Oh, am I, am no. I off? Oh, no, okay. uh, like, there's a point where like someone asks uh, Luffy if he wants to be a hero, and he's like, "No, heroes have to share their food with people who want it. That's why I'm a pirate." I oh, but come on, he's myself. He's he, he's a pirate the way that you know. Uh, I'm trying to think of a good. He, he's a pirate the way that Edward Elric is an, an alchemist. Like, yeah, kind of, but not really. Like, not 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 in any way that actually matters. No, uh, I mean, we haven't gotten that far. Uh, Luffy becomes a... D- does, he, all... does he break bad for a while? I mean, he becomes an international terrorist. Okay, that's fun. Like, he fucking takes on the CIA equivalent, and it's great. Okay, but are they like an evil CIA? Because I feel like that's probably, yeah. No, 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 like it's, this is the world government who has sanctioned these people uh, to be the secret uh, agents to defend, like, to, like, prevent what knowledge we don't want getting out into the world. And... Mm -hmm. Uh no, like one piece one piece is going to get wild. You're gonna be like, wait, I, I get to draw dinosaurs now, I get to draw fucking robots and zombies, and it's like, yeah, one piece. Yeah, well, yeah. Give me a zombie for the uh Trios of Horror crossover, man, because that'll be that'll be fun. Well, I mean, like it's not like it doesn't start off wild. Like you you start off with you know Luffy having Ralph Dibney powers for all intents and purposes. Like, yeah, I ate the magic fruit. Now I got long legs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there like, is. Has it never uh, like occurred to anyone that like Luffy just has the jingled like uh, serum, and he's like, yeah, yeah, I just got it from the fruit. I didn't have to, you know, distill it. Got it right from the tap. But yeah, no, One Piece is wild. Uh... It's one of those things. I've been reading a, a lot of Bakuman lately, um, the manga by the guy, I guess guys, is it a couple dudes who did a Death Note? And I feel like I can see the scenes in Shonen manga like more clearly than I could before. Where I'm like, oh, that's why they introduced this character right here, because it was, you know, a one shot or, oh, like, yeah, they were going to, you know, try to, like the anime was coming out, so they had to give a little pop right here to this part. And, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's. I feel. I feel like I'm, like I'm in bullet time for anime now. Where if I watched One Piece, I'd be a little bit too aware of all of this. So I, I've got to. Yeah. I've got to give it some time, and then I'll come back around to it. I I think that's fair. I would also say One Piece quickly understands what it is doing, and it knows how to push a villain over. Cause... Yeah, I mean, they, they do have some really fun villains, don't they? Mm-hmm. But, like, you need to, like, both hate this guy and want to see them destroyed while also thinking that they are very cool. And it's like, yeah, no, the show does a great job at that. Yeah, I mean, I feel like, I don't know, maybe it's just what I've read recently. I feel like manga and anime is good at that in general. Like, mm-hmm. uh, I got really into Demon Slayer a while back. Mm-hmm. And they did this really fun thing where it's like every major villain you, you get like right before they're killed, you get like their kind of inner human self that is like, oh, hey, like, here's like what I could have been. And here's, you know, like once all this demon stuff is cleared from my mind, like, it, you know, like you get that in American comics where, you know, it's like, oh, hey, Magneto's not really that bad of a guy. Like. He, you know, may have like you know lobbed nuclear missiles at someone one time. But he's a pretty cool dude. But then they go back and forth on it. I like that manga and anime just commits where it's like, yeah, this guy he's cool, but he's also just a total shit. And I, I think oh. it's a benefit of having it like created by a singular person or a singular team. It's not an entity that needs to exist for further iterations. Oh yeah, absolutely. Which is. Yeah, you know, I, I I'm gonna just keep wandering far afield from any actual point, but uh, yeah, like I I I read so much more manga nowadays than I do uh, 
American comics. And it's just because they're like so weird and joyfully weird. Like they never feel embarrassed by what they're doing. It's always like, yeah, we're just going to go ahead and, uh, you know, go for it in a big, big, big swing. And, you know, if you don't like it, that's fine. There's a bunch of other stuff in this magazine that you might like. Yeah. Or it's like, they don't feel the need to stick to a singular tone. Like I watched My Hero Academia and it's like, oh, we just had this super intense arc and now we're going to have an arc about a school festival where a person is going to do a crime for YouTube and he has to be stopped because if this school has one more controversy, everyone's going to sh- get shut down and one tiny girl who has never had anything good happen in her life really wants to go to this festival. And it's like, yes, these are perfectly good stakes in comparison yeah yeah exactly it's just like yeah these are you know part of the same story check that out look and the problem with like so many american comics is they don't understand like how to balance that instead you just need uh we need a bigger thanos like what are stakes what are human Uh, okay but hold on bigger thanos would be just yeah, that's a that's a million dollar idea right there. Like you know, Thanos is bad. But what if he was really big? What if what if he is built like a basketball player? So he's like an eight foot tall, really skinny guy. It's like a mom star. Yes, uh, yeah. and his name is Thanos. Ah, I like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, yeah, I mean, it's one of the, uh, American comics used to be like that, though, where you'd have, it's like, oh, Peter Parker, like, it's very important that he has to fight Electro, but it's also more important in some ways that he has to make it to his date with Betty Brant or whatever. Mm-hmm. And as they've moved towards this cycle of, like, we always have to be pumping up for the next big event, I feel like the supporting cast in the world and all that kind of stuff has gone away. And that's what you know, something like One Piece where it's been running for, you know, how many volumes? There's like a thousand chapters on the Shonen Jump there, app. There's right over a hundred chapters. Uh, there's over, I think it's a uh, hundred and two volumes in US at this point. Yeah. So like that gives you time to live in this world, to get to know all these characters. And even in shorter run manga, like, you know, you, you spend a lot of time just looking at what these characters do whenever they're not doing the thing that you mainly are there for, you know? Uh, oh, they they do this great thing that starts to build up over time where it's, uh, we just got done with a chapter arc. The news is reaching the world. And so they'll just do, hey, here's everybody else in the world finding out about this. And they get to a point where they just have so new people that it's like, oh, here we have to devote three episodes of the show to just everyone finding out about the news and checking in on all these old people that we haven't seen. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that kind of stuff is fantastic. And it gives, you know, it it rewards, you know, that investment, I think. And, you know, that sense of like, I don't know. I don't want to be like, oh yeah, like you know that kind of like fanboy need to like obsessively catalog characters and stuff like that. But there is something fun about that stuff that I, I feel like we've gotten away from. Where you know, if you're not writing Batman or Spider Man, then like it doesn't really even matter. You know, it's it's never going to stick. It's never going to like matter long term. <laughs> so whereas you know something, yeah, you know, like One Piece can just build up this whole weird magical world and. Yeah, it's just, a, I need to get into it at some point. I will, I promise. I'm going to read the manga before I, I can't do these long animes. Like, I, I read uh, My Hero Academia every single week that it comes out, mm-hmm. and I couldn't make it through a single episode of the cartoon, because I'm like, I just, I really just want to, like, read it at my own pace. And now that said, the uh, the Spy X Family anime that just came out is a delight, and everyone should watch that immediately. I need to get around to watching it partially because I know Janine and uh, my co-host on other shows, Devin, uh, are very divided on the U.S. dub. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I liked uh, what I've read of the manga. There's been some other mangas that I've enjoyed that I would love to see weird adaptations of, kind of going back to that. Yeah. Like, I'd love if uh, the, I would love if an American network was just like, hey, let's pay money and adapt this manga and kind of like localize it. Cause like 
I love High School Family. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love Magu-chan, God of Destruction. Either of those would make a great wild sitcom for like NBC or ABC if they wanted to try and do something different. Like, have you ever read either of those? Uh, I read High School Family. Um, for me, the peak was whenever the, it was like the cat, right? That, you know, also Gomez. joins the, yeah, Gomez. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, like, uh, again that's the kind of stuff i just love where it just takes this one weird little nugget of an idea and it's like we're gonna just run with this for Mm -hmm. you know uh, that one got canceled after what like 20 chapters or something like that but uh i i think it might still be going i know magu like it it actually was doing pretty well last i saw yeah i must have just fallen off of it but yeah no uh it, it would be nice you know like Give, give them a list of free form or something like that. Free form makes some fun shows. They can they can make a high school family. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I uh, yeah I, I wish that you know there were more weird American adaptations that weren't doomed to be just blistering failures. Like uh, I, I I was obsessed with the Cowboy Bebop live action show on Netflix <laughs> for like a solid two weeks because like. I, I would just call up my friend and we would watch the clips. I'd be like, hold on, just watch this, watch this. Like, this is insane. And they'd be like, why? Like, how does this work? Like, why, who watched any of this and thought this was a good idea? And I am going to be just as obsessed with the One Piece uh, adaptation once it comes out because I can only imagine what the budget is going to be like for that show. And it's just going to be like burning money. Not a lot of money, but it's going to be burning money. Oh, no. They like they are filming in South Africa. They are making full-scale ships. Oh, uh, like They are definitely burning money on this thing. Because uh, like One Piece is, I think, on a from an American perspective, incomprehensibly huge. Like, you know how we're getting Harry Potter theme parks where we've had those. Sure. So for years, until the pandemic hit, they had an entire floor of Tokyo Tower as a one-piece park, including a daily LARP that you could go through. Well, that sounds delightful. Uh, Like, there are multiple restaurants and stores. Like, One Piece is... See, like, yeah. I, I feel like that is just, e- even, you know, outside of One Piece, Jap- Japan seems to have, like, a real, just, like, a real friendliness for this kind of, you know, material, I guess. Where, you know, like, you go over there, like, oh, yeah, we have a Gundam statue that's been up there. You know, they have the, uh, doesn't, like, Miyazaki have a little theme park thing, too? And I know, you know, how Miyazaki is huge, of course, but... Mm. But I, I, I think part of that is this cultural divide that exists because America, we kind of hit a big problem with comics with like uh, Wordom and the uh, Comics Code Authority where it's like, yeah. oh, well, you can't let kids keep reading comics. And in Japan, that never really happened the same way. And like even when comics did get big again in the 90s, the big part of that was investors and yeah, collectability and yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And like, it doesn't exist in something that kids can easily access and that parents are familiar with and that you can just get into like there. Uh, you could just either pick up a volume one of a lot of manga or just start reading Shonen jump and find something that you want to get into. And uh, we don't have that here. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting because I feel like something like Webtoon should ideally be that, where, you know, it's like, hey, here's, you get to go and read comics on your phone. Look at that. Isn't that fantastic? But, like, web comics have existed for decades before. Yeah, absolutely. But I feel like they were always kind of a underground-ish thing where, like, you might bump into someone who read, like, Penny Arcade or something like that. You know, especially if you were me and hung out with dorks. But, like, you know, something like 
you know, Johnny Wander or um, like Vera Broskel used to put up her comics online before she kind of became a published author. Um, you know, people like that who were just making like amazing comics that you never, like you had to seek out and find on their, you know, self-hosted site that would crash if too many people went to it. Mm-hmm. And I feel like something like Webtoon is way more like the closest equivalent to the reach and the variety that, um, you know, something like Shonen Jump has. The problem is that you get this glut of nonsense because whenever there's no, you know, no editorial gatekeeper or anything like that, it's just kind of like whatever happens to get put up on there. And then the same, you know, 10 popular things rise to the top and we basically wind up back where we were at before. Or you end up in something that I've seen artists complain about where it's like, well, if you don't find immediate popularity in your uh, project and start something new and try and like see what is popular and base it on that. And it's like, that's not healthy. And it like ultimately a lot of these companies seem to be more interested in creating farmable IPs yeah. that they can sell the rights to. And it's like, well, you don't care about the art it, it, it's yeah, it's and weird that's it, definitely been a thing you know in comics for so long too i remember what, what was it, like platinum comics or whatever was the company that like was very explicitly like we want comics that would be turned into media properties and you know oh yeah weren't they the cowboy and aliens yeah 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 that's them um, yeah they were like hiring like actual comic writers and paying them under the table and then like pretty much having them ghost write books that they could then bring. And I don't think they really worked out. And now you also have a bunch of like failed movie writers who are trying to sell their films by turning them into comics without caring about comics. But we are very off. Yeah, of, uh, I keep wandering. We, I apologize. Yeah, no, no. It, bring us it, back. It, what, what are we talking about? Well, uh, we talked about how you got into The Simpsons. <laughs> how... yeah, um, you know, yeah, let's circle way back yeah. to that. Um, yeah. uh, well, I was going to say, have you ever read the um, Rebecca Sugar comic about The Simpsons? Uh, yes, that would be the uh, two friends, and one of them has like the severe head injury and can only continue to quote Simpsons. Yeah, and that was very much like me and my younger brother whenever we were kids, where, you know, it's just a constant chirping back and forth of, you know, Lisa needs braces, you know. Middle plan. Yeah, exactly. Um, You know, and just having that kind of vocabulary and stuff. And I was thinking about this earlier today, just that's something that I really miss in this time whenever all media is so scattered and, like, you don't have those... You know, like, I, I could have gone to school and said a Simpsons line, and, you know, 15 out of 20 kids would be like, oh, I know that. Mm-hmm. And now, I, I don't know if that really exists in the same way at all. Like, in, well, uh, except yeah. for with One Piece, you can probably go to Japan and say something from One Piece, and, you know, the big old crowd will turn around and be like, oh, yeah, that's Luffy. I know that guy. Uh, well, I feel like another thing, though, is that we don't really have media that is syndicated and recirculated in the same way because Simpsons we grew up and it was not only new on Sunday nights but we could catch the reruns uh when we were kids but like most of the episodes I knew or like most of the bits that I knew I knew from like the CD that I had or the Simpsons episode guide that I got like I read the episode guide more times than I've seen uh, a lot of the early episodes and like I poured over that thing and like that's how I do stuff and like even now so many of the memes are like people cycling things from the first 10 seasons or so into weird beautiful monstrosities and it's like we don't have e- we don't have any new media that way partially because we don't have any shows that run that long or kind of have that originality or kind of like exists as their own thing because like family guy very much falls into oh hey we're going to reference something but you can't really reference a reference Hmm. the same way like 
Fam- or Futurama was similarly to The Simpsons, like something that was coming up with new ideas. And while it might make a reference, that wasn't the only thing. And a lot of our new shows don't have that as much or they don't have as big of a cast of characters. Like, I love Bob's Burgers and I love The Great North. But, well, Great North, I think, is expanding further into weird quotability standards than I think Bob's Burgers ever did, which is fine because they are very different shows. But See, yeah, I, I, I've, I've never watched a single episode of The Great North, which is wild because I love Bob's Burgers more than like... <laughs> It's the one thing I look forward to watching each week it's on where I'm like, oh yeah, absolutely. I'm going to sit down and clear my schedule and I turn the phone off and I immerse myself in this little fictional city. Oh, the the Great North is, it feels a lot more like those early, uh, it feels much more like a weird small town show mm-hmm. than I'd say Bob's Burgers is. Hmm. And I think it also is a lot more, hey, this is the amount of queerness, both in, like, gender and sexuality and, like, just what a family is that we have been able to evolve into, especially since, like, Fox is no longer owned by Fox. Yeah, Fox. Yeah, no, I'll have to check it out at some point. Uh, I think I watched the first, like, ten minutes of the first episode, and I had that feeling that I got from watching American Dad after watching Family Guy, where I'm like, oh, okay, this kind of like, they, they slid over these characters and, you know, kind of reskinned them a little bit, which is probably not fair of me, but that was the initial impression. Oh, I, I, I think it's more of a McFarlane problem, but also, like, American Dad, I fell off a while back, but I admired the much weirder directions it would that it would oh, go ab- absolutely like i i mean i still watch american dad uh, i still watch family guy which is the least cool thing that i do um i like, mean you are a volunteer fireman so I, I, i'm a career you're, fireman you're thank a you. career fireman sorry <laughs> i did not mean i mean <laughs> like you are a fireman who is also an artist and uh, like that is kind of cool and also a pornographer now, so I, I contain multitudes, Luke. Um, yeah, no, I uh, no, uh, yeah, like I always say, the lamest things that I do is listen to Imagine Dragons and watch Family Guy, and that's basically you'll know a lot about me by just kind of that that little I, bit there. I'm, I mean, it could be worse. It could be worse. You could be really in the muse, and then I'd have to kind of side eye. Yeah, see, I, I don't know enough about music to actually enjoy anything that is even, that is not on the radio. That's uh, that's my, my worst trait. I, I know everything about, well, no everything. I know a lot about comics and books and movies and TV shows, and music is just one giant blind spot for me. Yeah, the main music that I've been listening to when I listen to music now is still a mix of the Fallout New Vegas soundtrack Mm -hmm. and then uh, songs from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Yeah, I was going to say, I listen to the Fatal Fury soundtrack whenever I work out. That's that's a really big deal for me. Mm -hmm. Um, But otherwise, yeah. Um, But now, let's see, we talk about The Simpsons. Uh, Again, we keep wandering because I have ADHD like a mother. Um, yeah, it, it's, uh, it, it's one of those things where I, I really, I lament kind of like the fact that the Simpsons just does not have that cultural penetration that it once did. Cause the, the show meant so much to me and means so much to me still where, you know, I will watch those early episodes and I just go right back to being, you know, 10 years old. But I knew that, like, it was over for me whenever the movie came out, and I was very excited to watch it, and then I sat there with, like, this growing feeling of dread of, like, oh, no, like, this isn't good. <laughs> like, like, I didn't think it was going to be, like, great, but I thought it'd be, you know, as Fine. good as an episode of the series. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, something like the Bleeding Gums Murphy episode or, um, you know, the one where Homer you know, is positioned to buy the bowling alley and then, or like manage the bowling alley or whatever, and has to give it up because, you know, Marge is pregnant with Maggie. Um, 
I will watch those and be moved to tears instantly. <laughs> it's just like, oh, okay, like huge heartfelt, uh, you know, moment for me. Yeah, and then watching the movie where it's like, oh, you know, here's the potential dissolution of these two beloved characters' marriage. And you know, it's not true, but still. So like, yeah, we've already seen it three times in the yeah, like, But like, I'll buy into it if they like sell it well. And there's just like no drama, no. No real buildup, no catharsis in the ending. It's just like, oh, okay, it's just goofy. I, uh, I I always complain about how anytime someone does a movie of an animated series, they go too big and it kind of ruins that movie. Like, uh, you know, with The Simpsons, you know, it's like, it's a weird show, but it's mostly kind of grounded, you know? Yeah. I, I've heard good things about the Bob's Burgers movie. Yeah, that's the I one exception. Oh, it's fantastic. Uh, I, yeah, I, I'm just still very COVID cautious. Yeah, that's fair. Have you had COVID yet? There's, as long as we're just talking about whatever. Oh, no. I've yeah. uh, I've been lucky enough to avoid it. Yeah, I, I had it once. Uh, I don't recommend it. Uh, I I'd say avoid it if you can, but, uh, yeah, you know, this is heroes con weekend and I wanted to go up there and ultimately I hit a certain point where I was like, you know what? I I'm tired and I don't want to get sick. So I'm just going to hang out at home and work on some projects. Fair. Yeah. Well, uh, we should probably wrap up since we are over the (laughs) Or we're about the length of a average episode. So, Colt, where can people find your work online? Um, I don't really do work online anymore. Um, but you can always go to my Twitter. It's at Colt Hoskins, uh, C O L T H O S K I N S. Um, that's my name. And you know, I mostly just retweet Luke whenever he posts my art for the show. And <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I'm I'm kind of taking a uh, a break from comics, which may become permanent. We'll see. Um, so yeah, uh, just you know, maybe go over there and follow me. And uh, you know, I, I don't know if you tweet at me, I'll probably tweet back. But I don't have the app on my phone anymore, so maybe not. It's always tough for Luke to get a hold of me because he'll message me on there, and then you know, three weeks later, I'll check Twitter. Like, oh god, I should probably respond to Luke. You aren't that bad. Yeah. Uh, one day you're going to message me and you're like, I'm at the bottom of a hole and I need to get out and you're the only person I get a hold of and I'll check it a week later and be like, oh no. Probably should have checked that sooner. Hope Luke got out of that hole. I mean, I probably messaged a bunch of people and at least you feel bad about it. Yeah. James. Uh, all right. And uh, so yeah, make sure to go follow Colt you don't have to. That's fine. That's, no one else has it in the last, you know, decade or so. So, yeah, that's, that's all right. We, we don't need to start now. Uh, Janine, my normal co-host, uh, can be found online at Janine Juliet, J-A-N-I-N-E-J-U-L-I-E-T. On the Twitter, uh, check out My Favorite Pokemon, the podcast that she has done in the past where people talk about their favorite Pokemon. I am Luke. You can find most of my stuff at LukeHare, L-U-K-E-H-E-R-R.com, but I don't really maintain the website that well. Uh, I I have a bunch of stuff. Follow me on Twitter at Coltreg, K-O-L-T-R-E-G. I finally got done with Wordle and Dunglian, so uh, more posts that I make will either be me retweeting my own stuff or being angry about politics. So always a fun choice. Well, yeah, yeah, you really spoiled for choice now. If you want to be an angry politics guy, but I mean, there's something every day. It's great. It's great. It's horrible. Uh, you can follow the show at Domance on Twitter. That's D O H M A N C E. Uh, or you can visit domancedon.com, D O H M A N C E D A W N. That brings you to the Tumblr that I have set up. Uh, you can probably find a streaming. If you'd be interested in seeing a YouTube version of the show so you can just listen on YouTube, let me know. 
and uh, leave your comment suggestions for Eric the Whirlwind uh, for the next episode when we go to see Grandpa Dragon. It, it just takes a while because he's old and a dragon. Uh, we will catch you on the next episode. Safe sailing.